Well, JPA stands for Jakarta Persistence API. Jakarta Persistence API is formally known as Java Persistence API. Well, Eclipse Foundation is basically, you know, took ownership of Java EE and Eclipse Foundation has changed the name from Java Persistence API to Jakarta Persistence API. Well, JPA is just a standard specification that facilitates object relational mapping to manage a relational data in a Java applications. It provides a platform to work directly with objects instead of using SQL statements. Well, in Java, JPA basically provides object relational mapping feature. All right. And JPA it provides a standard APIs and there should be an implementation for, you know, JPA standard APIs. For example, there are popular JPA implementations like Hibernate, Eclipse Link, TopLink, MyBetis. So these are the very popular JPA implementations. Let's quickly take a look into Hibernate ORM framework. Well, Hibernate is basically a Java based ORM tool that provides a framework for mapping application domain model objects with the relational database tables and vice versa. JPA is just a standard specification and it don't have any implementation, right? And Hibernate ORM framework, it basically provides a JPA implementation. All right. Hibernate is a JPA implementation provider. All right. And as we know that Hibernate is a ORM framework, so we can use Hibernate to directly map a domain model, you know, objects with the relational database tables. For example, consider we have a Java class that is student. It has a fields like ID, first name, last name and email. On the other hand, we have students database table. It has a columns like ID, first name, last name and email. All right, we can use a Hibernate ORM framework to directly map a student Java class object to the relational database table. And Hibernate will map, you know, internally the object fields with the database table columns. Now, the question is how Hibernate works behind the scene. Well, let's say whenever we persist or store an object using Hibernate, then Hibernate it behind the scene, it will create the insert SQL query and then it will execute those insert SQL query using JDBC with respect to the database. All right. So just remember Hibernate it internally uses JDBC to execute the SQL queries and Hibernate is responsible to generate the SQL queries. Okay. We just have to play with the objects and Hibernate behind the scene will generate the SQL queries based on the operation and then it will use the JDBC to execute those SQL queries. Okay. Consider one more example. Let's say we want to retrieve a record from the database table using Hibernate. Then Hibernate it behind the scene it will create a select SQL query and it will use a JDBC to execute that select SQL query. Well, consider one more example like we want to update a record in a database table using Hibernate. Then what Hibernate it does behind the scene is that it will generate the update SQL query and then it will use JDBC to execute that update SQL query with respect to the database. Well, it means that Hibernate is the responsible to generate the SQL queries and execute those SQL queries with respect to the database using JDBC. We just have to play with the objects. We don't have to create the SQL statements. Hibernate is responsible to generate the SQL statement and it will execute those SQL statements with respect to database using JDBC. We just have to play with the objects. Okay. That's why ORM is very, very, you know, important tool to work with objects in Java. Well, as I said, Hibernate uses JDBC for all database communications. Hibernate uses JDBC to interact with the database. For example, we have a Java application and whenever we use Hibernate in a Java application, then Hibernate internally uses JDBC for all the database communications. Okay. So Hibernate acts as an additional layer on top of JDBC and enables you to implement a database independent persistence layer. Well, here database independent persistence layer, meaning you can use Hibernate as a JPA provider or MyBetis as a JPA provider or Eclipse Link as a JPA provider. So all these JPA providers internally uses JDBC for all the database communications, right? So JDBC is basically a standard Java API that, you know, talk with the database and the ORM frameworks behind the scene or internally uses JDBC for all the database communications. I hope you pretty much understood what is Hibernate and how Hibernate internally works. Alright, great. I will see you in next lecture.